friends, Father Frank Pavone here, National Director of Priests for Life. Welcome to our program, and I am very excited to welcome today uh, the lead actress in the movie Unplanned, about which we have been talking a lot, and that is Ashley Bratcher, who plays Abby Johnson in this film. Ashley, it's a joy to have you with us. It is a joy to be with you. Thank you so much for having me. 
Well, first of all, congratulations on an outstanding job uh, in this movie. And uh, I have seen it a couple of times and worked together with uh, some of the key people in putting it together. And uh, I have myself have known uh, Abby for, uh, for a decade and uh, our paths have intersected in many different ways. So you do a very good job portraying not only the, the, the character, but the dynamics uh, the spiritual and psychological, emotional, and, 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 and just the human dynamics of this story. So first of all, I just want to say that I know I speak for so many people. Uh, you did a great job. Thank you. It means so much to hear that. You know, uh, the, um, tell us first of all how you got involved in being such a big part of this movie. Well, it's a total God story. I, I initially knew nothing about the casting. It was very confidential. They had uh, decided not to go traditional casting route. I had this follower on Instagram who is not a producer. She's not a writer. She's not in the film industry at all. But she had felt led to pray for people in the film industry. And somehow we had gotten connected on Instagram. She had been praying for me for about a year I still didn't really know her. We had not communicated much. She sent me a message and said, Ashley, I think that you're meant to play this role. Well, when a stranger tells you that they have a word from God that you're meant to do something, sometimes you might think they're crazy. Right. <laughs> I, w I did not know her. So I was like, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. And that kind of blew it off because yeah. I just thought, oh, okay, this lady's crazy. <laughs> right. But she was also really persistent and obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So a couple of weeks later, two weeks had gone by, she messaged me again and said, Ashley, did you audition? Please audition. You, you were the one who's meant to play this role. So I thought, okay, if she's so convicted, what is the harm in having them send me a couple pages of the script to consider auditioning? Right. And that's what happened. She, she had some sort of connection that she was able to get me some of the script. I read it and thought Abby was super charismatic and so dynamic in that little scene that I was compelled to look her up. I heard her testimony, her full testimony for the first time, and I was absolutely floored. I remember ugly crying and just praying and, and thinking, wow, this, this story must be heard. This story has to be told, and I want to be a part of it. Yeah. I went home and told my husband all about it. We prayed about it for weeks and finally got the phone call at the last minute, literally the last minute that the role was mine and it was time to get on a plane. Isn't that something? Now, you've been uh, involved in acting since uh, your teenage years, right? Yeah, I started acting on the stage when I was in high school. I was in drama club and things like that. But when I graduated high school, I was living in rural North Carolina and didn't really feel like it was a viable option. So I went a more traditional route. I went to school and got a degree. And it was in my senior year of college that I thought, okay, well, I've done the right thing, so to speak. I have this one life. Maybe I want to give this another shot and really go for it. And I did. You uh, are obviously a woman of faith. And uh, how have you found um, the intersection of a life of faith as a follower of, of Christ intersecting with um, life as an actress in a profession that many people are so concerned about some of the ungodly elements in there? You know, I just am very transparent about my faith, and I think that when you are transparent with people and you just commit to being authentic, that they respect you, and when you set boundaries, it, it puts you in position to not have to worry about what comes your way because people know who you are and what you represent. I've always been very open about it, and because of that, people have really just receive me with open arms they've they've really not judged me i find it kind of concerning and hypocritical that when people in the industry find their faith like chris pratt for example who has recently been outspoken about finding his faith mm -hmm. he's been criticized and i think it's so disheartening because regardless of what you believe when people find their purpose and they find joy in their life what right do you have to criticize that? I, that? That's one thing I don't love about the industry is that there's a lot of criticism and it, it, it's more cool to be spiritual than it is to have a Christian faith. Well, I'm not going to change who I am and I'm never going to compromise the fact that I believe that God has put me in the position that he has. 
You know, uh, I, I, in my work with Priests for Life, we've intersected with a lot of people in, um, in Hollywood and in the entertainment industry uh, uh, across the world. And uh, I have noticed, um, very much consistent with what you're saying, that there are more and more Christians who are taking the position that you take that, hey, I'm not going to hide this. Let's be transparent. And uh, they're, they're coming together more and more and supporting one another uh, in the living out of their, of their Christian faith, uh, even while per pursuing excellence in this particular uh, line of work. I think there's a, there's a, there's a change happening. I completely agree. And as Christians, we're not called to walk in fear. Fear is not of the Lord. And when we honor God, He honors us. I just think that He will promote those who seek to glorify His name. And whether that journey looks like something that you or I agree with, we, we each have different platforms and we're each reaching a different audience. So I think it's important to remember that when people are expressing their faith, not to judge them for the walk and the journey that they're on. Well, for those viewers and listeners that are just joining us, we are talking with Ashley Bratcher, who is the lead actress in the movie Unplanned. She plays the role of Abby Johnson, and you can find out a lot more at unplannedmovie.com. Now, Ashley, I know that this movie and the story of it actually intersects with your own story in your life. Tell us about that. Yeah, like I said, when I was first cast, I had a very short notice. It was about five hours that I had to get on a plane, pack, and head to Oklahoma for several weeks of filming. When I arrived in Oklahoma, I had to hit the ground running. There was no time to really stop and let people know what I was doing. I was in pre-production meetings every day, back to back to back. So when my mom called me on the fourth day of pre-production, um, I was on set, and she I want to know where I was and what I was doing. I was very hesitant to share Abby's story with her because she had shared with me when she was younger, she'd had an abortion. It was something that we had just casually talked about. It was not something that we really dug into, but I didn't want her to think that this was a movie of judgment or condemnation right. or that I personally loved her any less because I'd never once judged her for what she had chosen to do. Right. But I was careful because I didn't want to hurt her feelings or hurt her in any way. But I was also proud, and I wanted this story to be heard. And as I started explaining Abby's testimony to her, my, my mom just completely broke down and fell apart. I could hear her sobbing through the phone as she said, Ashley, I need to tell you something that I never told you before. What you don't know is that when I was 19, I was in the clinic for the second time, and I had my name called back. I was on the table being examined by a very pregnant nurse. I got really sick to my stomach and I knew I couldn't go through with it. So I told her that I couldn't do it. I got up, I walked out and I chose to have you. That and talk about a profound moment in your right. life. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, uh, it completely overwhelmed me, but not in the sense that I was ever angry or upset, but more so in the, in the sense that I felt the overwhelming presence of God that he would craft my story from conception to align with Abby's story for such a time as this, that I never knew I had my own story. And here I was portraying one of the greatest voices in the pro-life movement. It was confirmation for me that God had really chosen me and empowered me for this role. And it really gave me confidence to move forward to lean into him and to know that he was right here beside me, helping me through the entire process. You know, one of the themes that I've always uh, articulated in the course of my full-time work in the pro-life movement is this, that America will not reject <laughs> abortion until America sees abortion. Now, yeah. a key part of this story, and, and the film brings it out powerfully and in various ways, is that this is exactly what happened uh, to Abby and what happens to hundreds of other people who um, either work in the abortion industry and have come out or others who in various ways support abortion and then they change their minds. A lot of the dynamic is that they come face to face with what an abortion is. They come face to face with who that child is. Now, right. tell, tell us about, of course, the, the key scene here in this uh, movie 
is when Abby is looking at the ultrasound as an abortion is taking place. That was not part of her normal day-to-day uh, -day activity. She was asked to help on that particular day with the procedure. And when she saw that, as the tagline for, for this uh, movie says, what she saw changed everything. Tell us what that right. scene was like for you, portraying that powerful moment and, and what it says and should say to the rest of us about how we bring conversion regarding abortion. We need to bring people face to face with what it is. Well, I always say that there is a silent Holocaust happening. When we look at the Holocaust from history, it wasn't until we saw these victims that we took action. Yes. And like you're saying, that's what this movie does. It puts a face to the victim. It shows the humanity in the womb. We see a fully developed baby at just 13 weeks reacting and fighting for its life, moving away from this instrument to try and survive. I think that when people see that, it's, it's really a tough thing to come face to face with. I, I don't know how you can look at that and walk away the same person. When I was filming that scene, what most people don't realize is that it's CGI. So there's nothing for me to look at. I had a sticker on a monitor to show where my eyes should be focused and I had to just imagine what was happening. Yeah. But because Abby's testimony alone, just hearing it had broken my heart, it was a lot easier to hear it over and over and over and really feel emotionally connected and devastated to know that this is what's happening. So it just came, it just came. It was completely propelled by the Holy Spirit and letting God break my heart for what breaks his. So I hope that when people watch it, that will come through. You certainly did an awesome job in, in that scene and in all the rest of the film as well. By the way, when you were in that room, uh, uh, that particular uh, scene, uh, uh, you were there with a friend of mine, Dr. Tony Levitino, uh, who, of course, was oh, an abortionist yes. and played the abortionist. And uh, now he's been a good friend for many years, and he, uh, he's one of our medical advisors here at Priest for Life. And uh, Dr. Levitino, of course, as you know, he, he too has borne witness in so many ways describing for people, you know, what these procedures actually are, what they do, and, and his... Uh, his, his testimony is awesome as well and, and has brought many people to conversion. Um, and this leads, Ashley, to a, to a theme that I know is very dear to your heart and, and to mine as well, and to that of the whole pro-life movement, and that is hope. Um, you know, I always say that the mission of the pro-life movement is to replace despair with hope. Uh, people who are going to have abortions they're not doing so because of freedom of choice. They're doing so because they feel they right. have no freedom and no choice. Uh, those who have right. had abortions, uh, they're locked in despair until someone comes to them and says, no, there's hope. You can find forgiveness. You can find peace. You can move on uh, in the plan that God has for your life. Uh, it, tell us about how this theme of hope uh, inspires you. I know because you, you've done a number of, uh, in, your, in your acting uh, career so far, uh, you know, you, you, you focus on the theme of hope. A and tell us how that theme inspires you and also inspires this movie, Unplanned. I just feel like that's something people so desperately need. Everyone is searching for something that brings them joy, that brings them hope. And for me, that is the love of Jesus Christ and the ultimate sacrifice that he made for us. I choose to do films that I feel like have a redemptive message. Abby's story is the most profound that I've ever been a part of because Abby felt responsible for 22,000 lives, 22,000 abortions that she facilitated. That's a tremendous burden for someone to carry on top of having had two abortions of her own. Having that moment of truth revealed to her and then carrying that burden is something I can't even imagine. So being able to lay that at the foot of the cross and have people say, you're forgiven, you can't go too far that you have outreached the hand of the Father, is so powerful. I think, you know, the power of life and death is in your tongue. And when we choose to speak from a place of love, we create a safe space for women who are either in crisis pregnancies that 
aren't married or young or unplanned, uh, women and men who are post-abortive have that conversation. They can't have that conversation when they, they have their defenses up. I think it's really important that we speak from a place of love and we show them compassion. You know, uh, uh, Ashley, the, um, the wound that abortion brings is multifaceted. And one of the things I've been commenting on about unplanned is, uh, and, and Abby and I have, have talked about this uh, many times as we have worked together to heal people who have come out of the abortion industry, but the multifaceted wound, it, 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 it obviously the mom, the mom has a tremendous amount of pain and grief. Uh, the baby, of course, is, is the life is taken from the child. The abortionist and the staff, they suffer from it as well. Uh, but then you have, you have a number of scenes in this film of the grandparents of that child in the womb. And, in, you know, in one case, there's the father who brings his daughter to have the abortion. So he's complicit in that act. But then you have that other moving scene of the, the mom on the other side of the fence pleading uh, with her daughter for the life of her, her grandchild. And so grandparents, I think, are going to connect when they see this movie with their own grief over the loss of an aborted grandchild. Uh, siblings, too, uh, experience this in the family that when they are, become aware that they've lost a brother or a sister uh, to abortion. And then, of course, there's the pain and the grief of the pro-life advocates themselves. That scene, for example, where they're praying over the, the two big uh, garbage bins of, uh, of the aborted baby parts. Um, and, and you see the pain and the grief that people all over the country, all over the world, have as they're trying to save uh, these um, children. Um, as you've played the role that you have played and now are obviously speaking out about this, this film, what goes through your mind in terms of the impact this is going to have on people just like that, people who may, be, may have been complicit in abortion in a lot of different ways? Um, and, and how do you see this film impacting them and bringing them to that point where they too can accept the healing that Christ brings? I think it's a matter of coming face to face with what abortion really is and then and then understanding it more because the intention of these women is not to go in and to kill their children. Like you mentioned before, no woman really walks in because of freedom of choice. She walks in because she's scared and she feels like she has no other choice. Yeah. So when these women and men that are post abortive see this film or abortion workers see this film, I, I hope that they understand that there's no condemnation in not having known. Because when you know better, you do better. And there are people like you and me and others across the country who are willing and are standing with open arms to say, you're so forgiven. You are so forgiven. This is not, this is not just define you. Your past does not define you. Your identity in Christ is worth so much more. So I think that this film does a really beautiful job of, of exemplifying that without beating anyone over the head with some sort of sermon. It is just an example by Abby's life, just living her life was an example to that testimony. Uh, Ashley, this uh, movie, as you've already explained to us, obviously impacted you in a tremendous way. It revealed to you uh, an aspect of your own life uh, that you did not know. Uh, is there anything you can tell us about uh, what you saw and how it impacted some of the other people uh, that worked on bringing this film about? I know that there were a lot of people who just didn't really have the insight into what was actually going on. I think a lot of people were outraged when they found out what Planned Parenthood had been concealing and to learn that they had abortion quotas on top of just this traumatic experience that Abby had. People have just been passionately moved, but in a sense that we all feel unified for this greater purpose to honor God. There's not a single person on set that I can recall 
not having a heart for this message, even, you know, there, there were a couple of pro-choice people on set. I know for a fact, it's not been widely talked about and some people weren't even aware, but I spoke with some people who I challenged and I said, I don't know how you can be pro-choice and a Christian. Mm -hmm. It's it's conflicting. And I think that when they see the film, they're going to have to come to terms with that. Um, so I know that there are people that worked on the project that their hearts have been just been moved so much. I can't speak to anyone else's personal testimony, but I witnessed people having um, a, a very strong reaction to some of the scenes that we were doing. Well, Ashley, I want to thank you again. I, 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 we want to keep uh, in contact with you. I know the Lord has uh, his hand on you as well and, and is using you in a mighty way. I'm so grateful for that. Uh, and I know he has more in store for you as he does for all of us. But you stand in the line of a great many people. Of course, Abby has, uh, through her story, impacted your life. Uh, and many others, uh, but Norma McCorvey, the Jane Roe of Roe v. Wade, uh, I ministered to her personally and knew her very, very well. Uh, she went through wow. this journey as well. Dr. Bernard Nathanson uh, was a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and of course, he carried that same burden uh, that you described so well that Abby has been carrying. I'm responsible for you know all these abortions, and uh, both Norma and and Dr. Nathanson felt that terrible weight, um, as did the mm -hmm. people whom um, uh, I remember one weekend. Uh, uh, you, you, I don't know if you've heard this story where Abby and I had a, a group of um, former uh, <clears throat> clinic workers in a, in a room. And one of the processes of coming to healing is they count how many lives they were responsible for taking. In that room alone, those people were responsible for taking half a million lives. And they, yeah. they put up their hands and they were crying and they said, our hands were covered with the, the blood of these babies. And by the end of that, that, that weekend, they were raising those same hands and crying and saying, now our hands are covered in the blood of Christ and we are forgiven and we have his peace. You are standing yeah. um, as this character in this powerful film in a beautiful, uh, as scripture tells us, cloud of witnesses. Uh, so many people who have received his mercy and go on and proclaim his mercy and I see God doing that through you, through your acting skills. You're proclaiming his mercy. And I just want to thank you for that on behalf of so many people. And as we conclude here, just invite you to share whatever final thoughts you'd like to give to our audience. I just hope that people will, will go out and see the film, that they won't be scared away by the R rating. There's no nudity. There's no sex. There's no language in the film. I think it's so important that people know what's happening behind closed doors. And it's critical for the film as well that the theaters are packed on opening weekend. That opening weekend really determines the success of a film. It gets the attention of America. And if we do well, this is something that could spread like wildfire. And it is so important that we talk about it right now. It definitely is. And uh, Ashley, God bless you. And, and brothers and sisters, we've been talking with Ashley Bratcher. Uh, the movie Unplanned, she plays the role of Abby Johnson. Unplannedmovie.com. And uh, the weekend of March the 29th, the opening weekend, let's fill those theaters. Let's get the word out. Thank you, Ashley. And thank you all, brothers and sisters. Father Frank Pavone here of Priests for Life. We're not going to let anything turn us around. We're not going to let no dogs turn us around, no water hoses turn us around, no police clubs or jail sentences, and we're not going to let any injunctions turn us around. And so today I say to you, in the pro-life movement, no Planned Parenthood is going to turn us around. No biased media is going to turn us around. No HHS mandate is going to turn us around. No Obama administration is going to turn us around. But you know what? When you and I 
take up this call and we talk about abortion, if we speak about it in church, we're told we're too political. If we speak about it in the political arena, we're told we're too religious. If we speak about it in the world of the media, it's too disturbing. In the world of business, it's too distracting. In the world of education, it's too controversial. In the streets, it's too disruptive. So abortion, if abortion is wrong, where do we go to say so? We go into the churches, we go into politics, into the media, into business, into education, and into the streets. Some churches, some churches haven't wanted, got, wanted to get involved in political hassles with the government, so they've been silent on abortion. They didn't want to get involved in hassles from the government. They didn't want to take the fight to the government. So now with the HHS mandate, the government took the fight to them. And when it comes to that mandate, we've got